microcode is the magic layer inside a CPU that links hardware and software. And writing microcode is often a tricky puzzle, even more if the hardware is designed to just barely support many of its target functions. Having said that, today let's implement some stack and subroutine instructions of my minimal 8-bit CPU, even though it doesn't even have a stack pointer. A CPU design that features stack instructions like jump to subroutine and return from subroutine allows us to structure and reuse sections of our code so we can build upon our own work or the work of others. Let us figure out microcode specifically for the following four stack operations. Push A to stack, PHS, pull A from stack, PLS, jump to subroutine, JPS, and return from subroutine, RTS. I have already covered the ground laying aspects of writing microcode for my minimal 8-bit CPU design in my previous video. Let us start today by reminding us of the stack concept of this CPU. The memory range from 7F00 to 7F FF serves as stack memory, where 7F FF holds the stack pointer, storing the LSB of the next free location on the stack. We need to make sure that we can access this stack pointer really efficiently by sort of hard coding its MSB and LSB address. Here is the idea. Usually the bus is controlled by the CPU module currently outputting its content. But what if we build our bus lines with pull-up resistors so that an idle bus will automatically show the value FF or 255? And what if we are extra sneaky and connect the pull-up resistor of the most significant bus line directly to the inverse high control signal? In this way, by switching off all outputs, we are able to generate FF if high is inactive and 7F if high is active. This idea will just barely prove to be sufficient to implement full stack functionality on this limited hardware. Let us begin with the PHS instruction, which pushes A onto the stack and decrements the stack pointer, growing the stack downwards. To make things easier, let's call this whole program counter setup here PC and our memory address register MAR. As always, the first three microsteps just fetch an opcode from memory. Let's visualize the data flow step by step. So counter out memory in and counter out memory in high copies the PC address into the MAR, exposing the next opcode in RAM. RAM out instruction in moves this opcode into the instruction register and count enable increments the program counter up here by one. Memory in high and memory in loads 7F FF into the MAR, exposing our stack pointer in RAM. RAM out memory in B in reads out that stack pointer and moves it into the MAR and also into the B register. Now the MAR points to the free top of the stack, to which we write A by using A out RAM in. B out A in copies the stack pointer from B to A. In step number 8 we subtract B from A without a carry in. The result is the value FF, which is stored back to B and also into our MAR, exposing our stack pointer again. Step 9 now adds B to A. The result is our stack pointer minus 1 which is stored as our new top of the stack in our stack pointer. Now we have stored A correctly on the stack, but we have lost the original value up here. We read it back in by using A out mar in, which exposes our value we have just written to the stack. In step number 11, we use ram out A in to move this value back into the A register. Number 12 just clears the step counter and we are done. Let us now consider the next instruction, PLS, for pull A from stack, which increments the stack pointer and transfers the previously stored value from the stack back into A. So again, the first three steps just fetch the instruction from memory. Memory in high and memory in B in, a 
again, load the value 7FFF into the MAR and also copies FF into our B register, exposing our stack pointer again. Step number five, ram out A in, just moves the stack pointer into A. Step number six now increments A. Since we first invert B from FF to 00, zero and then add the carry in flag. So our result, stack pointer plus one, is stored into our A register. Next, A out, RAM in, stores our incremented stack pointer at the RAM address 7FFF. And A out, memory in, copies that same incremented stack pointer to our MAR. So we have our initial value A exposed again. In step number nine, ram out A in, transfers it back into the A register. Step number 10 effectively does nothing, since it first subtracts one and then adds one to A. But it updates the flags to a meaningful value. Finally, step number 11 clears our step counter and we are done again. Okay, that was the warm up. Now let's do the subroutine instructions that we will just barely be able to squeeze into 16 microsteps. It took me quite some time to figure this one out. I had to reconfigure the hardware in many subtle aspects again and again. It only now seems so straightforward. We start with JPS for jump to subroutine. My plan here is to store the current program counter, both LSB and MSB, on the stack before we jump to the subroutine address following the JPS opcode. This will allow us to find our way back later. The first three steps I've marked in green, again, just fetch the opcode from memory. And again, memory in high and memory in B in, move the values 7F and FF into our memory address register and also into B, exposing the stack pointer. Now ram out A in memory in, copies the stack pointer into our MAR and also into the A register. Now counter out RAM in pushes the LSB of our program counter onto the stack. Now line number seven adds minus one to our stack pointer here in A and puts that result back into our A register and also into our memory address register. And we use counter out high RAM in to move the MSB of our program counter also into our stack memory. Note that we've successfully written our return address to the stack now. To be precise, it's the return address minus two. When we want to return from our subroutine, we need to keep that in mind and resume at that address plus two. Now we need to write back the updated stack pointer to 7FFF. So B out memory in points the mar back to 7FFF. Since A already contains the stack pointer minus one and B is minus one, microstep line number 10 just outputs the stack pointer minus two and writes it into our stack pointer at 7FFF. Now counter out memory in and counter out memory in high, just copies the program counter, which is still holding the LSB and MSB of our target subroutine address into our MAR. Let's do that. Like so. Now the LSB of our target subroutine address is exposed here. RAM out, B in count enable, moves that address temporarily into B and increments the MAR. So that now our target MSB gets exposed. RAM out, counter in high, moves that MSB up into the program counter. And our last step is to move our target LSB into the program counter as well. And we are done. We have really just barely made it in 16 microsteps. Please note that we do not need to end this instruction by resetting the step counter, since it jumps back to zero anyway. 
This stuff can really make you feel a little dizzy. If things start to spin in your head, feel free to hit that pause button and take a deep breath before we tackle our last one. Return from subroutine or RTS. I think we already know what the first five steps do, so let's not repeat that. Ram out A in memory in, moves that stack pointer into our MAR and also into our A register. Now line number six is incrementing that number by one, moving it back into A and also into MAR. Now we have exposed the MSB of our return address we've just stored on the stack. Now ram out counter in high moves that MSB back into our program counter. Microstep line number eight increments A and the MAR again so that both point to the stack pointer plus two now. Up here and also in the MAR. Note that now we have the LSB of our return address exposed. So ram out counter in finally moves it back into the program counter. Next we need to update our stack pointer. So after B out memory in, we are pointing to 7FFF again. And after A out RAM in, we've effectively incremented our stack pointer. This frees the stack memory we've used before to store our return address. As a last step, let's take care of the fact that JPS has stored the return address minus two on the stack. Therefore, we have to increment it twice to end up exactly at the start of the next instruction following JPS and the subroutine address. And finally, we clear the step counter. Whew, stack microcode is really not at all an easy topic. But let me stress again how much the stack instructions increase the power of a CPU design. At least for me, this whole effort has more than paid off, since it makes programming on this machine really enjoyable. And this is it for today. I really hope you got something out of all this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the content on my channel, please consider subscribing and leave me a thumbs up. Take care. Bye.